Hello guys, it's a great pleasure to be here with this special video for iTube because my, it's my first video after to be part of the editorial board of the iTube. For me it's a great honor because all my techniques I start to present here on iTube. So today I will discuss about the five years of the Canabravas polypropylene double flanged and 10 tips for this technique. In 2017, I present for the, the first time it in Los Angeles in ASIS Film Festival and receive a uh, first prize about this technique. So I keep my studies and you can see this video. It was the first video that I present with the polypropylene, a simple polypropylene that was forgotten in the ophthalmology. So I couldn't uh, think that this double flanged double flanged polypropylene will open a lot of a lot of uh, new techniques for many surgeons around the world. So today I will discuss about the 10 tips of the Canabravas polypropylene double flange. The tips here will appear for you in the, in the, in the screen. In the first one, I will discuss about the material needed. The material needed, I like to say, if you use a 5.0 polypropylene, you need to use a 26 gauge needle. If you use a 5.0 polypropylene, you need to use the 29 gauge needle. My research were with CTS, no foldable IOL, and foldable IOL with four closed eyelids. When I use CTS and no foldable PMMA IOL, I suggest 5.0 polypropylene and 26 gauge needle. When I use uh, foldable IOL with four closed uh, loops, four closed eyelids, I suggest 6.0 and 29 gauge needle. Tip 2, polypropylene tests. As you can see in this video, it's important you test the polypropylene inside the needle before and outside the eye before the surgery. It's important because sometimes you try to insert the polypropylene inside the eye, inside the lumen of the needle, and it's not happen. Tip number 3 mark two millimeters from the lingos in the sleep lamp or you can use this four flanged mark that you can see two millimeters from the lingos and use the needle to mark it it to insert to insert it as you can see in this video tip four a long scleral tunnel one the mistakes in this technique when you start is when the surgeon go directly in the sclera. I did it when I, I started, but after my research, I could observe that it's important to create a long tunnel, as you can see in this video. Observe in this video how I go and I create a long tunnel in the sclera, and so I rotate it to the anterior chamber. Now you can observe, I'm inserting the polypropylene inside the lumen of the needle and I remove it back for the same tunnel. Observe now. Tip 5. Push the polypropylene into the eye. Observe in this video as I, after I insert the polypropylene inside the lumen of the needle, I use my right brain, right hand and I push the polypropylene inside the eye while I pull the needle outside of the eye with the other hand. Tip 6. Hold the base of the polypropylene with a micro forceps to create some tension. Observe this image 
as you can see in the head arrow that I show the 23 gauge micro forceps holding the polypropylene but before this image I have pulled the polypropylene and hold it in the base with the micro forceps and so I go and cut it it's important to avoid to avoid tilting the IOL because the IOL and the CTS can be with no tension inside the eye and produce some tilt. Tip 7. Cut about 1.5 to 1.2 mm from the basis of the polypropylene and the sclera. This is a good size to create the flange and a good size to uh, insert the, the flange inside the scleral tunnel to avoid to avoid tilt and to avoid a, a big flange outside of the eye observe now in the video how I cut it about 1.2 to 1.5 millimeter from the base of of the polypropylene observe how I dry it with the cotton to facilitate for me the flange tip 8 flange size it's a, a important tip because when the surgeon start with the canabravas technique they are afraid about the size of the, the, the flange to back into the eye here I will show you in this video the size of the flange but you need to have a long scleral tunnel because if you have a small flange like this one but go directly in the sclera the flange go back into the eye but this flange the size of this flange is perfect to inside inside the scleral tunnel now you can see this image the secret of the size of the flange, as I told you before, is cut about 1.2 to 1.5 millimeters from the base. But remember, create a same tensile uh, before to hold the base of the polypropylene. In these two images, you can see the size of the flange in the left size, in the green arrow. You can see in the head arrow the bad size of the flange. It's common to the, the surgery start with this bad size because afraid to the, uh, the flange back into the eye. These two images now, you can see the left size, a patient that I have published in the JCRS, that you can see some inflammation uh, in the conjunctival that I have treated with a moxfloxacin corticoid for seven days. So after this, I back to the operating room, reduce the size of the flange and back it inside the scleral tunnel. Tip 9. Bury the flange inside the scleral tunnel. It's so important to avoid flange exposure and to avoid endophthalmy. If you can read the last the September editorial from the JCRS, uh, the editor is Liliana Werner. You can see how these tips that I, I, I discuss here with you stay in the editorial. It's so important to avoid exposure, exposure flange and to avoid endophthalmy. Observe in this video how I use the micro forceps to insert to insert, look the size of the flange, and now I insert the flange inside the scleral tunnel. I know sometimes it's difficult to insert like this, but it's important the flange stay inside the scleral tunnel. Tip 10, be careful with piercing IOL. I know I was the first surgeon to discuss about the piercing IOL when I use the flange, uh, when I present it in the AAO, in the eye tube but after my research I have some problems with tilt because this uh, after it I start to use the foldable IOL like uh, the IOL 
with for loops I IOL. You have a lot of a lot of options with for loops IOL, but you can see these three videos that you can observe the test that I fee that I, I did with a horizontal axis, a vertical axis, and IOL page. Guys, thank you. It was a pleasure to be here with this first special video to iTube after to be part of the iTube editorial board. It's a great honor for me. Thank you.